Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel for a special review on a now complete Rob Zombie 1 6 scale, the 2007 film version, that was the first one Rob Zombie made, Michael Myers custom figure. We have a head sculpt by Ones Customs and coveralls, t-shirt and knife made by Tanila's Customs. That's Tanila and her husband Dave who handled the weaponry and just did a fantastic job with this. I've done a lot of work to these coveralls, I will show you a uh, quick picture in a moment. Uh, of how they look when you get them and then it's up to you to uh, do a fair amount of weathering to get the uh, color that you see before you now i will throw in some daylight photography as well that i took earlier today because it's night time now and these led lights that are shining at him uh, do make him look good but i'm not sure you're getting a very true uh, visual representation of what the actual color is for these coveralls now and uh, i'm really happy with him he's come out very very good I'm using a body, which I'll leave a link or some information in the information section under this video to show you what body it is. Uh, I can't really pronounce it. It begins with a H, but I remember David Tucker shared the information on Facebook. That's David Tucker at Sea Creations. Uh, reviewed his stuff. Mm, I was going to say recently. I guess it was quite recently. I reviewed some David Tucker Rob Zombie cover rules. Uh, the thing I like about David Tucker's is how gritty they are. Uh, David Tucker does the weathering for you. Whereas uh, Tanila will just send you the, the raw coveralls and then you have to do the weathering yourself or maybe send it to someone who can do weathering. Uh, hint, hint, hello. I'm more than happy to do that. It's very fun weathering these. So if you have uh, these, there was 20 sets uh, of coveralls made by Tanila. And uh, this is number 16 of 20. So if you're one of the 20 that has these and you don't know how to weather them and uh, you'd like it done, maybe you're in the UK, which is even better. I'd uh, be more than happy to do that for you because uh, it's a fair about you know a fair bit of work, but I do enjoy doing stuff like that. It's not work to me, it's uh, just fun, so that's uh, on the table for you. But he looks amazing. Uh, I go so far as to say he's almost perfect. Uh, maybe might put some of these uh, cotton pad thingies like this just in his midsection, maybe just to pad him out a little bit. I don't want him to look like he's got a beer gut or anything. I mean, Tyler Mayne's huge, but he was um, pretty, what would you say, athletic. You know, there wasn't no beer gut going on. He was a big hinge dude. Now, that tombstone, that's the Necker 7-inch uh, figure tombstone. It's not as big as it should be for 1-6 scale, but it's quite big. So I just thought it would make a nice little uh, display piece for the review. Uh, I might change it up and use Stephen Maurice's diorama as well halfway through. And uh, just the german uh, copy of halloween on blu-ray steelbook actually no that's just a dvd not a blu-ray but lovely steelbook just a you know nice little accompanying piece there as well oh and uh, stephen maurice's pumpkin just because i thought that was a kind of gritty looking pumpkin and it would suit him quite well but anyway it's been a long time in the making this was one of the first things i ever uh, asked uh, tanila about was the rob zombie cover rules that's a long time ago but the material was very hard to come by and she finally got hold of some and, like I said, made 20 uh, sets of coveralls. And they are scrumptious. Got the light quite bright now just so you can see uh, a much brighter version obviously they would look different if you were seeing them in person but i just want to take a moment to say how special this particular version of michael myers is to me uh, even though i know the movie gets a lot of hate from people and understandably they always bring up the one scene at the beginning in the kitchen which is really uncomfortable and cringy to watch uh, you know, we all feel the same, I think, when we watch that. If you don't feel like that, there's probably something wrong with you. <laughs> it's an uncomfortable scene to watch. Um, but this is the version of Michael Myers that got me interested. Uh, I always was aware of Michael Myers on the same level. I was always aware of Jason or Freddy. Uh, but I have to say I've always sort of grown up liking Freddy more because of the impact the original Nightmare on Elm Street had on me when I was a little kid. And I saw it when I was, you know, not supposed to. Uh, it had a, a, quite an effect on me. Scary film. Uh, and the original Halloween, you know, dated as it is, still holds up as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's a very simple, simple story. 
and uh, you know Rob Zombie came along and gave you know Michael Myers uh, quite the fleshed out backstory which uh, I'm fine with you know because it's a separate thing and it was like I say the film that kind of triggered my interest and got me looking on YouTube and made me discover folks like One's Customs um, and that was always the dream man I remember like a decade ago uh, looking at One's Customs uh, old head sculpts you know the videos and he'd do the coveralls himself he'd do everything himself and it'd take a long time to do and I'd see the videos and think man I don't know if I'm ever going to be lucky enough to own one of those and um, I ended up getting one in the end, one of the older ones over there that's an old complete One's Customs figure but this one uh, very much kind of bashed together from different pieces to achieve uh, the greatness that you see before you now. Look at that. The great thing about the um, the body that I got from David Tucker here, which again I'll leave a link or some of them information, at least the name and model number or something of what the body is so you can uh, find it on eBay. It is out on eBay, uh, it's quite easy to find once you know what it's called. Uh, but the body is great. It's bigger than a Hot Toys body. I'll do a little size comparison as well with a Hot Toys figure for you as well. All these things I've got to remember to do during this video. Um, but it is definitely uh, the body you want to use if you're getting these coveralls from Tanila. Uh, and also the ones David Tucker at Sea Creations made uh, are for a body this size as well. So, And that's rightly so because Tyler Mayne's huge. So this Michael Myers definitely needs to be taller than your you know, Nick Castle 78 or your you know, Warlock. From Halloween 2 but yeah a very special piece because it's the one that triggered my interest like I said always aware of the 78 classic but it was Rob Zombie's Halloween watched it with my good buddy Phil uh, one Saturday brought around you know we'd always come around with the beers back when we were in our early 20s we'd always watch movies and just uh, remember watching Devil's Rejects and a whole bunch of stuff and then one day he brings around this Halloween and um, yeah I just really enjoyed it so here he is finally complete we'll get a much better look really close up at all the details of the coveralls in a moment and the head sculpt too and the awesome work on the knife all right we'll pose him up some and have some fun all right so here is the little certificate of authenticity for the rob zombie halloween one michael reissue head sculpt by one's customs and this was very um, sought after by me for a long time. I did manage to get, thanks to David Tucker, I managed to get the bloody version from Halloween 2 that one made. But this one always eluded me. I just, I just couldn't get it. And one day, someone on Facebook who, uh, gosh, you know, there's a lot of people uh, I do talk to on Facebook on a daily basis these days uh, because of the channel. Um, but the chap who sold me this, if, you are, if you're if you watching this now, leave me your little comment so I can acknowledge you. Uh, but thanks for selling me this. Uh, it literally was one of the major things on my list. I really wanted to tick off the, the box there. Yeah, that's the certificate for the head sculpt. It's an amazing head sculpt. It's quite a big one. Again, you need the bigger body for that head uh, because otherwise it just proportion-wise never made sense to me. I, I did try it on smaller bodies like sometimes you know bodies the same size as a hot toys figure and it just never looked right so you really do need the taller body for that particular Rob zombie head sculpt by one and here is the certificate of authenticity by any of this customs of the rob uh, rob zombie halloween one set uh one six scale coveralls t-shirt and metal and wood knife and lovely touch the way she always supplies a sample of the materials used signed by tanila and uh number 16 of 20 january 2019 so yeah laminated very classy and uh, always like the colors the purple and the yellow um, it's got a few of those certificates now quick little shout out again to uh, Stephen Maurice here's his uh, pumpkin that he made this was an awesome uh, Halloween present absolutely what was it yeah yeah it was I was gonna say yeah <laughs> such an idiot uh, first I said Halloween present then I was going to say or was it a Christmas present but it was actually a birthday present because my birthday is on Halloween isn't that awesome for someone like me to have a birthday on Halloween it just it just couldn't have worked out better could it it's crazy but yeah check out the uh, awesome work on this you got that whole thing like is that supposed to be Michael Myers holding the knife thing from the 78 pumpkin it does uh, look like it the more you look like it I think they uh, the more you look at it I should say I'm talking like a complete bumbling boobab today uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with me. Maybe one too many coffees. All right, getting up close and personal. Absolutely love this sculpt. Uh, you get 
there's already a bunch of videos on the channel regarding this head that he has uh, taken many forms over the time that I've owned this head sculpt. I've tried it on different bodies, I've used different coveralls, switch things around and film it again. So there is a fair bit of content already on this head sculpt. So if you don't feel satisfied with the look I'm giving you at it now, then rest assured there is a much more in-depth video somewhere on the channel that will show you this head in all its glory. This video is more about the coveralls really. And as you can see, went to town with the weathering. It is very harsh because I wanted it to be. Uh, you've got the blood where it needs to be and uh, where you're stabbed up in his uh, shoulder area up there. And just really nice stitching work here from Tanila. And the patches, which I might need to paint slightly. Uh, I can't remember what color they're supposed to be, but sometimes they look like a blue, like this one here. I'd have to double check to be honest, I can't remember, but I might need to adjust the color of that slightly. Uh, all the little loops and the one for the hammer there that's present all these little button tabs they don't actually function as buttons but they're there because you know they need to be that's the accurate look and uh, at least I don't think they function as buttons I don't want to say that and then uh, turns out they do I don't think they're supposed to undo I think that's probably best left alone but there is uh, David's awesome knife I'll take that out of his hand soon we'll get a look at that but it's just really, really well done. Now, there was a little trick that I did with the collar. I think this side has unglued itself. Uh, you can see what I did on this side. Just a little bit of uh, this stuff, which is great for uh, gluing all kinds of stuff. But if, particularly if you have one six scale clothing that you need to kind of stick to something else. And that's great for that. And you can see how I kind of pinched it. And it's got that little curve down. That's exactly how that should be. And that was the same, but I think the glue came loose because I didn't use enough of it. So I'll fix that. But that's the, the look I was going for on the front of the uh, DVD there. But really nice. I mean, that's the proper corduroy. And I did weather around the edges with a black wash. And, uh, you know, all kinds of different colors for the wash, really. I used black uh, wash, brown wash, red blood, and uh, some cool stuff. It certainly is quite a harsh you know weathering effect that needs to be applied to these coveralls in order to get them looking screen accurate it's not something i think someone who's never done something like this before is going to be able to do that well um i've been weathering figures since well gosh since i started out I remember me and nick had some sideshow uh, collectible one six scale freddies and i think he had some jasons i just had the freddy uh, certainly weathered the hell out of that and you know just practiced a bunch on other figures over the years so when it came to do this, I already knew exactly what to do and how to do it. So it was just a matter of having fun doing it. There was no sort of stress of thinking, oh my God, what if I put the paint on the suit and it's, you know, it just doesn't work and I overdo it and ruin things. And I know some of you may be looking at this thinking, oh, you have ruined it. It's just covered in filth. But if you look at the reference pictures from the movie, which I did and rewatched the film, turned up the brightness a little bit while I was watching it and just went to all the Michael Myers scenes, really studied the uh, coveralls but the pictures that i found online uh, through various forums and threads uh, with people who had pictures of the hero coveralls from the movie the first 2007 movie that rob zombie did uh, the tyler main screen used coveralls were disgusting they are i didn't even go as far as i was supposed to there's a blood smear all down the thighs here like really just like someone just threw buckets of blood on the guy uh, probably from like the end of the movie but i kind of went for He's killed a few people in my version here, but he hasn't got to the bit yet where he's in the empty swimming pool where Loomis shoots him a bunch of times. That hasn't happened yet, but he does have the blood from the shoulder area from where Laurie stabbed him uh, when he tried to reconnect, shall we say. Um, but yeah, uh, very harsh weathering, and I would be very keen to see everyone's um, you know, job on this. Because like I said, 20 sets of coveralls have been made. I'm pretty sure some of those people won't do any weathering to them. They'll just put the coveralls on him and that'll be it. Um, which, you know, that's fair enough. But that's that's just not how they look in the movie. You have to go at this thing with, you know, you get yourself some black paint, some brown paint, some yellow paint, some bit of green, and obviously red for the blood, and a big ass bowl of water. Now, it's mostly water that you're going to be using. You're not going to be taking paint to this thing. You get a little bit of black paint, and then you put a hell of a lot of water in there. And you mix it so that the water turns black. 
you test it out on the side of the plate there and just make sure it's not too painty mostly water but just with you know a black consistency to it and then you just start drowning the thing in black wash and then you need to go into your browns and your blood stains and all that stuff but it's not a matter of literally just painting the coveralls you need to do uh, a wash effect which is mostly water with uh, some paint mixed in to achieve or toning down of the light brown or uh, whatever that color was when you first get them but i am certainly certainly pleased with this they actually did turn out much better than i was expecting i didn't have 100 percent confidence when i started this i thought i'm probably gonna i'll certainly make them look more screen accurate but i might not get it quite the effect i'm hoping for in my head before i did it i have to say i actually did uh, achieve the thing that was in my head so that's that perfect weird balance in the movie i know it's a lot of filters and color grading sometimes they have almost this almost kind of weird greenish kind of color to them and then other times uh, you know not so much like you can see a little bit of the original sort of color just shining through there a little bit and some around this leg area but yeah really satisfied with how they turned out all right so i've just brought the stephen maurice diorama into play here and you can see the light just hitting off that blade look at it as i move it's absolutely gorgeous now that is dave tanila's husband who's responsible for that kitchen knife there this time he went with uh, stainless steel so absolutely awesome and really nice handle on that blade too so as you can see that body does allow you to get the arm up and you can get him in a stabbing pose you can do all kinds of poses with this figure really he's very poseable uh, but then again michael myers isn't the most you know dynamic when it comes to uh, a figure that you're going to be posing a lot you really just want to uh, convey the menace and the terror uh, and with the tyler main uh, michael myers here you really don't need to do much people uh, do slag it off but he's definitely one of the michael myers i would least like to have chasing after me uh, especially after seeing what you did to that nurse in part two forget about it nah Tch. I did just find these two strips of material that were um, with the coveralls when I received them from Tanila's Customs. Uh, so I can't remember, I don't remember why exactly they are in the package when I received them. It might have been an accident or it might have been just as a, a sample of the material, even though uh, there is a sample on the Certificate of Authenticity. But either way, there was these two strips of the original material loose in the packet when I received it. So it's a good way to reference and let you see what the coveralls look like before any of the weathering I mean you can see it's quite a difference there so they were originally all this color and now they look like this something worth mentioning about the body that David Tucker sent me the fact that the rubbery kind of um, chest and stomach section that this body has it's kind of that kind of Hot Toys-esque like an Arnold Schwarzenegger body sometimes where uh, it's got like a rubber a rubbery kind of uh, torso layer that goes over the top of the actual body itself just to make it look more real but one thing it must have been doing was preventing the arms from going flat down by his sides so something david tucker did was uh, he must have heated up the body and then used maybe a scalpel and then he removed a section of the rubbery kind of body here uh, just removed it from where the arm would rest against the side of his body and it allows you to get the arms right flat down beside him because there's nothing worse like you get a lot of batman figures by hot toys the more bulky Batman's like that is the closest you'll be able to get the arm to the body you won't be able to achieve that nice natural you know drop whereas uh, it can be achieved with this uh, body now thanks to what David Tucker did uh, I don't think he ever actually told me about it maybe just uh, forgot to mention it it's like one of those things he did so much to the coveralls that he sent me that uh, maybe just forgot to mention about the body mod that he did but it's something I will be uh, doing when I get my uh, I've ordered another one of these bodies so that I can use it for another Michael Myers project and I will be copying uh, David Tucker's idea there with removing some of the, the you know the the layer of rubbery skin just to allow the arm to fall flat so that is a little thing that is worth doing now I just removed the head sculpt just so we can concentrate on the coveralls themselves and the way they fall onto the body I was debating with myself at one point when I was checking the reference pictures of the hero coveralls from the movie um, they're very frayed at the ends here where they meet the boot like right here basically I'll just need to take a scalpel or a sharp knife 
and just scratch away at the edge of the leg of the coveralls here until they're nice and frayed. I was considering maybe taking a little bit of length off because that wouldn't actually be a problem because they're so frayed at the edges of the of the ends of the legs here. If I did remove some, that would obviously create, you know, fraying around from where I'm actually cutting the section of material away. Uh, so that could work out just fine. I might leave them. They're not that much of a, it's not an issue. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, I think they are very, very well fitting to this body that I've used. Again, I will leave the name of the body I've used in the information section below this video so you can just click on that little section under the video that reveals more information that I've typed out and I'll show you uh, which body it was that I've actually used. So let's just turn this around. You can see all the details here and uh, both um, Tanila and David Tucker always get this bit right, which is really good. Uh, that little seam that you get down the center of his back and yeah just really well fitting really well done and uh, particularly love the corduroy section up here and definitely helps the look by doing that little glue trick that i told you about where i just put a little bit of glue uh, i can't do it now i can't show you because it's actually glued down but uh, just a little pinch there just to get it to kind of fall into that natural kind of look that it should have a white t-shirt underneath and I was debating with myself whether or not to weather the white t-shirt a bit. Um, but it does look quite, you know, the couple of little flashes in the movie where you do see the white shirt, it is quite clean looking. Or maybe that's just me. But uh, I don't think I'll be weathering the white t-shirt because I could very easily screw that up and then I, it would bug me. So, um, but yeah, fantastic coveralls, really well fitted. And a lot of fun to do the weathering on these. But you can see the side profile. Nothing is... Uh, you know, coming across odd. It all looks good to me. Now let's get a nice close look at Dave's knife. And forgive the fingerprints showing, the stainless steel. Uh, you have to be careful, make sure you don't get your, your fingerprints on there because you can see them quite clearly. But really nice wooden handle with the, um, the metal studs or uh, whatever it is. I'm sorry, I don't know the technical name, but it is an accurate thing. And very sharp. Uh, it is actually like a, what's the word, like serrated edge, is that what you'd say? I guess serrated is a bit more, um, it's a bit different to this. This is very smooth, but it has been sharpened towards the edge. Sorry, I can't tell you the exact technical name for everything, or the techniques used here. But it is a very accurate looking knife, down to the shape of the way the, the blade meets the handle. It's got that distinct look from the 2007 Halloween movie. So, really nice, great weight to it. Nice heavy blade and just excellent work really 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 well done All right, some height comparisons now we have on the left the rob zombie 2007 michael myers custom figure and to my eyes very accurate and to the right, we have the pretty famous in the 1-6 scale Michael Myers custom figure world. It's the Mad Bug Nick Castle stretch sculpt uh, with a Nathan that Silent Surfer paint job and herring, a Bruce Banner Hot Toys body, Yonsil coveralls and t-shirt, Virgo knife, and Jungle Boots from Platoon, uh, the Hot Toys figure. So Nick Castle... I remember reading an interview of him recently where he was talking about how, you know, as you get older, you do shrink a little bit uh, when he was doing his work on the 2018 film with his brief kind of scene as Michael Myers. He was just talking about that. And he said that I think in 1978, he was clocking in at about 5'11", just about touching six foot. Um, so Tyler Mayne, much bigger, much taller guy. I uh, can't remember his exact height right now. I'm sure you guys will pop up in the comments and uh, let folks know. That'd be good of you. But I think that looks pretty accurate to me as far as these two you know, different versions of Michael Myers. The 1978 classic and the 2007. Some love it, some hate it. Rob Zombie movie. I personally love it because it started this whole Michael Myers obsession for me. It just happens to be the film that, you know, perked up my interest and made me start looking into uh, the custom you know Myers world on YouTube with folks like one's customs and see creations and 
to Nina's customs and all those dudes out there. You know, there's people I haven't um, sampled anything from yet. I do have an order with Kane Productions for one of his heads, and uh, that's all good. When I get that, I'll review it for you. And there's um, obviously, you know, we've got Creep Customs who did... Well, there's a whole list of people out there. Obviously, most recently, Chino out there in America. Uh, goes by um, Yandu on Facebook. Amazing, amazing work he does with head sculpts and herring them in particular. He's an absolute master. I've actually sent uh, three of my most beloved Michael Myers heads. If you look over there, you can see the one-fourth scale is headless. And that one's headless over there. And the Blackest Eyes version 2 uh, is headless because they've all been sent off or about to be sent off to get rehaired by Chino out there in America. So if you see this dude, thank you so much. And I really can't wait to see what you do with those but there is the size comparison between these two absolute beasts let's compare him to some other figures now and there he is next to a hot toys one six scale wolf predator that's the most recent wolf predator that hot toys have released and it's a big tall figure and even though the predator is standing on a slightly bigger base than the hot toys style base i've got michael myers on at the moment they're basically the same height. So that should give you an idea of just how big and imposing and heavy this Michael Myers figure is. He's uh, very heavy because of the body used and just the general size and mass and bulk of this nightmare on two legs. So I think um, that is quite impressive to see him beside the Predator, the Wolf Predator from Hot Toys, which is a big figure, like I said, and he's basically the same size. So that's pretty nifty. Let's try him with a Batman, maybe. And here he is next to the Hot Toys Arkham Knight Batman figure. Both on the exact same height base. And that's pretty even, Steven, to be honest. Uh, shoulders seem to be... Well, Myers has a little bit of an advantage. Just slightly higher in the shoulders from Myers. So, I mean, yeah, basically level. Though. You can see both the hands are at the same point. The waist, chest to be at about the same place. So if you have yourself a Hot Toys Arkham Knight Batman, you pretty much can see or imagine how big this beast is. And next to Harley Quinn, because she's quite a popular figure uh, in the collecting community. Quite a few people have her, and rightly so. She is awesome, although I am using a different uh, version of Harley Quinn's head sculpt here. I've switched out the heads, but she'd still clock in at the same height regardless, so... Uh, yeah, quite a big height difference here, but obviously there would be. But just to give you a little visual, you know, thing that you can gauge it. And just grab a shot with Freddy, Jason, and Chucky. There's still a couple of horror characters that I do need to get. Not that I really want them. Ah, well, why would I get them then? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like people always uh, always leave me comments saying, "Oh, you need Leatherface." I'm like, do I really? You know, the the original Texas, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a masterpiece of horror. Uh, it's one of the, if I was a film director and I was making a horror movie, uh, whoever my leading actor would be, I'd sit him or her down with that movie and say, I need you to convey sheer terror and fear for your life the way this lady did in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And the other example I'd use is The End of Alien with Sigourney Weaver when she's, uh, you know, stuck in that little escape pod with the alien. Uh, two of the best examples of, and uh, The Shining. I don't know the lady's name, I've forgotten, but you know, the main uh, female character from The Shining with Jack Nicholson. Uh, God bless her, she actually genuinely was terrified because uh, Stanley Kubrick was just putting her through hell. But I understand why, um, you know, the art, you gotta, you want the result you want and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the light bouncing off his hair there is just making this look amazing. This is definitely, you know, I'm really, really satisfied with how this turned out. I'm very, very happy with that. Um, I recently heard a little breeze through the wind about this custom sweater, um, which I can never remember the name, damn it. It's in here somewhere. Where is it? Let me go from my drawer. There it is. Uh, yeah, the guys who made the Freddy sweater uh, are right here. So you can contact them, you can pause that and track them down. But I paid 75 I think it was, and I've recently heard that, you know, people who have gotten touch with um you know the folks responsible for this sweater have been quoted 250 so it went from 75 to 250 now I, I just i mean it's none of my business i've got mine now so that's it i'd never 
you know, need another one. But for the folks out there who saw my video and then really wanted one of these, I don't really like that. You know, I paid 75 and to jump to 250 cost. I mean, I can tell this was a lot of work to sit and, you know, knit this together. It would be, you know, a tricky thing to do. And it is done to perfection. Uh, but 250 pounds, man, that's a lot of money. Mind you, Yunsil coveralls go for 300 dollars. Um, so, you know, that's the game. That's the collecting world. That's the custom, you know, world. That isn't a completely custom figure. That's the sideshow Freddy with a different hat, a slightly repainted face by me, a new custom sweater, uh, changed out the brown pants for black ones, and a little custom base there. So, from Joe Turner. In fact, Joe Turner did um, all of these. Need to get in touch with Joe Turner again. I need some more of these. I keep forgetting to do that. And there's Jason from Sideshow with all the wrong color for his clothing. I don't know why they did that. Uh, I did a little bit of weathering to him. Didn't go too far. Jason is certainly not, you know, he's not my top favorite. Uh, when it comes to the horror figures, I guess it would be obviously number one Myers, then Freddy, then Chucky, and then I guess Jason. But it'd still be a little bit hit or miss with Jason. I do... I love the look of the character, the more iconic look for Jason, but I'm definitely more of a Freddy and Myers and Chucky kind of guy, uh, with, you know, Jason being at the back end of all of that, but still appreciate the films, and I, I realise how beloved they are and how hardcore the fan base is. I do have the game as well, I really enjoy playing that, although I can't help but wish every time I'm playing it that I was controlling Myers instead of Jason. I don't know, the, just something about a free-roaming Haddonfield game where they just let you go out and you can just go in any house on Hattonfield, uh, you know, throughout Hattonfield is enterable. You can go in any house you want. And I just, you know, it's a different subject for another video. But I just got this dream of Rockstar doing that, like a passion project. Because it's not impossible. They did that with the Warriors movie. You know, the guys at Rockstar loved the Warriors film. And they made a passion project and made the game um, of the film, which was amazing. They gave like a whole prologue section that you got to play through. And then halfway through the game, you get to play the movie. Uh, I can just imagine, can't help but imagine what someone like Rockstar, a company like them handling, you know, the Halloween license would just be a dream come true for me. But very unlikely to happen, I guess. But anyway, there is um, these guys together. And I've been rambling on for almost five minutes now. So <laughs> I'll let you guys uh, go soon. I'll wrap up the review. But as you can see... It turned out fantastic. I got I got literally no complaints. Um, just really, really happy with how he turned out. Everything about this looks good to me now. And I'm super, super thrilled. That looks perfect. That looks perfect. Yeah. And that looks perfect. He needs some work. But that's Sideshow for you. All right. Moving on. He's in a bit of a Jesus Christ pose right now. Which looks actually pretty awesome. Be quite tempted to leave him like that. It looks very odd. Like, why would Michael be doing that? What's going on in his head to make him do such a pose? Interesting. Now, uh, the main reason for putting his arms like this was just to show you the consistency of the measurements used here when Tanila put these uh, coveralls together. She did a really good job. There's no sudden tightness or bagginess where there shouldn't be. Very consistent and well done. Uh, and do remember folks when you you know get yours or if you've ordered any there are only 20 of them that have been made so i'm pretty sure everyone already has theirs that's getting them uh, but just remember they will actually be this color when you get them and you'll have to do this yourself or find someone who's willing to do it for you i personally am willing to do it for you for a price of course um i enjoy doing it so it's not going to be anything extortionate price wise um however i doubt uh, people would come to me there's plenty of um other people out there who are more well known for doing things like this um but i'm certainly uh getting into it i uh, really do enjoy you know repainting the uh the neck of figures uh, of michael myers from 2018 which i did recently did a few commissions for that and uh, got some happy customers out there um and yeah i mean if anyone does have these coveralls and you want them weathered we can do that for you get in touch we'll speak we'll talk to each other see what we can sort out and yeah i am just super super happy with these massive shout out to tanila for some great work on these and also to dave tanila's husband for an amazing job on that knife and of course to one's customs for making such an awesome head sculpt and uh, for david tucker for um 
putting me in the know when it comes to this body to use because it is uh, the perfect one for such a creation as this. So folks, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notifications on any videos I upload. I do upload videos quite regularly because I love to do it. And in particular, if you're a Michael Myers fan, make sure you get in there and subscribe because there's always Michael Myers action on this channel. And uh, there'd be more if I thought that someone wouldn't sneak into my room at night and slit my throat. <laughs> I do make a lot of Michael Myers uh, content and I know a lot of you subscribe because you like the DC stuff or you like your Predator, Terminator, you know, uh, Robocop and stuff like that. But I'm a big Michael Myers fan and I just love making videos on the characters. It's, it's something I'm always up for doing. And I often have to stop myself and think, nope, you've done enough for this week. Try and make yourself do something else that's not Michael Myers just to keep people happy because otherwise I'd be sitting here doing one Michael Myers video a day. But anyway, if you are a Michael Myers fan, I've got your back. As, as far as uh, entertainment goes, I think uh, you'll be more than satisfied when you dig into the channel and find all of the different videos that have been made over the years regarding Michael Myers stuff. Uh, it's it's the goodie room, the proverbial goodie room for Michael Myers fans. You just open the door and you go ahead and you step right in. Uh, so yeah, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the content. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Dean Knight Free Free Free. You can check me out on Patreon and help support the channel if you so wish. I'm gonna clear it up, guys, and let you guys go. I really really enjoyed showing you this piece, and like I said before, let me know if there's anything else you want to see on the channel, be it Freddy, Jason, Myers, Batman, Joker. Terminator, Robocop, Chucky, whatever it is you want to see, uh, you go ahead and you let me know. Even if I've reviewed it before, I'm more than happy to go back and do more videos on older figures because that's what they're here for, man, to enjoy them. And I love to, um, you know, just get my hands on them, take them off the shelf and do another video and uh, bring back the love for an older piece that may need, uh, you know, people's memories need to be jogged sometimes. Like, I mean, look at the, the Jack Nicholson figure over there. That's an old figure now, but that stands up towards anything else that's come out recently. A great piece. I'm rambling again. Five minutes now. I'm going. I'm really going this time. Thank you. Love you. See you later. Bye-bye. My name is Michael Myers, and I'm about to fuck up your day.